Hey guys, welcome to this episode. This is David with Geeks and Jocks. In this channel, we talk everything about Pokemon Yu Gi Oh! and Magic TCGs. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Modern Horizons 2 and why I think that you should or you shouldn't buy it. If you want to help us to get to a thousand subscribers, you, if you want to comment, like, and share this video, also, you want to subscribe if you haven't done so already, that will really help us out. But without further ado, let's go into the video. So Modern Horizons 2 is just around the corner and I'm sure you're already chatting with your friends where you're going to buy this product, where you're going to get it. Just remember about your local game stores, they will have this product and I'm pretty sure they'll be happy to sell it to you. With that being said, if you want to buy that product, this is what you need to know. So I made a video a long time ago talking about the fetch lands, enemy fetch lands that were going to be reprinted on Modern Horizons 2. But the one thing that did, that did happen was they did confirm that enemy fetch lands will be printed. And also that they will have the old border treatment. Uh, a bunch of the cards that are appearing in the set also have a old border treatment and also a premium printing for those uh, premium boxes that they will have for Mono Horizons 2. Something that has changed from when Mono Horizons 1 came out. With this, Wizards is confirming that they will not ever print out, at least not for the near future, they will not print out fetch lands in any standard set. There has been a lot of talk about this uh, over the past years and they have clearly stated that they will never print out fetch lands in standard sets again. And this reaffirms that statement because they are getting reprinted in a set that does not affect standard is Modern Horizons 2. The, it, it's in the name. It goes straight to Modern. It actually also bypasses Pioneer. Which makes you wonder if they're going to make a Pioneer remastered or something. Which I'm pretty sure they will do in the near future. And one of the things that they said they won't reprint them for is because they are very overpowered. But what I do think is that they will not reprint them at a standard price. They won't, they won't sell them at a, a standard booster pack price, but they will sell it at a premium price such as Modern Horizons or any reprint set. And we have seen a, a lot of this going on because if they think they were too overpowered, they even made a secret layer. They're reprinting it in Modern Horizons 2 to help boost the sales. And I'm pretty sure it will help. Also that uh, old border treatment, I like it a lot. That doesn't mean I'm gonna get mine at uh, the old border. I prefer mine the, the original when it first came out. Whether it's Onslaught, whether it's Sandicar, whatever it is, I prefer them when they originally came out uh, versus this old border treatment. We're only uh, going from what is what is spoiled so far, uh, but there's a lot of cards spoiled already on the Whistles of the Coast website. And some of them are really, I really, I'm really excited that they reprinted, like such as Camel Coffers, like I said, the enemy fetch lands, Imperial Recruiter, Navy Nero's Disc, Mishra Factory, Greed, Patriarch's Binding, Upheaval, Wonder, Gorilla Shaman, Soul Snare. All of them are decent reprints. However, the reprints that I'm more excited are like Ursa, a Higher Lord Artificer, uh, Force of Negation, the First Liver that also are coming out in the old border treatment. They have the old border cards, they also have the borderless cards, and they also have these sketch art cards that all they will be available in collector boosters. They are trying to make this uh, or boost the sales for the collector boosters. With that being said, it doesn't mean that it's gonna affect the price of the regular boxes. I don't think so. I think that the set by itself is very strong. Like I said, with cards like Ursa, Force of Negation, and First Liver, I think that the set is pretty strong. Like I said, they also have Cabo Coffers, and they have a plethora of new cards, which we're gonna see right now. We, this set is very strong with the hate cards, or the cards that shut down other decks, such as Sanctificer and Vec, Obsidian, Charma, Void Mirror, Curse Totem, Endurance, Flame Blitz. There seems to be a card for everyone to hate on Dredge and Tron and also Tron. Like they really come came up with a lot of hate for Tron. If we look at cards like Sanctificer and Vec, it's a human cleric that you pay two white. It has protection from black and red. And when it comes in, you exile from all graveyards black and red cards. And if a black or red card 
it goes from the battlefield or was to be put in the graveyard, it excels instead. It is a 2-2, which is a bear. Hate bears, two white, like I said, human cleric. This is a great card for humans against dredge because it just shuts the entire dredge strategy because you know it only leaves you with like green and you can't do much with green basically your all your creatures are are black basically when it comes when it comes to dredge then we have obsidian charma which is a dragon which is a dragon that for three colors and two red this card costs one less for each land that will produce a colorless mana it has flying and whenever it comes in you know it, det it destroys a land that produces colorless mana basically against tron it, once they have their three um lands that produce colorless mana or you're up to three land if they only have two you can put them in the field for a, lo a lot less cmc cost and it will destroy one of their lands uh, basically it's also a flying 4-4 so it's a very strong creature for red decks that really struggle against Tron basically a lot of decks struggle against Tron but this is a really good card against Tron for decks that run red then we have Void Mirror that is a, a two colorless it's an artifact that if uh, its spell was cast and no color was spent to cast it it just just counters that spell so also very good against Tron um, I don't I don't think it's that strong because Tron also plays green so if they pay one green to cast it then it just voids it also also they can crack chromatic sphere or chromatic Stone and just generate any color and they and this will cancel the void mirror effect basically because they did spend a color to cast so we also have endurance which is a colorless and two green it's a uh, elemental incarnation that has flash has reach when it enters the battlefield up to one target player puts all their cards from the graveyard and the bottom of the library in any random order and it also has evoke pitch a green card from your hand and uh it goes it comes in but at the end of the turn it has to be sacrificed we also have flame blitz that for one red is an enchantment at the beginning of the it deals five damage to each planeswalker and it has cycling of two and with this it seems that there's a card for every deck to hit on dredge and tron and also tron they did do a lot of hate for tron in this in this um, set so we have cards such as garth one eye that is a wooberg that you pay wooberg and it's a that is a legendary creature human wizard that taps and when you tap it, you choose a card name that hasn't chosen before. Among Disenchant, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. And you can cast a copy, paying its mana cost. Like I said, humans are getting a lot of support. Like I know, I understand it's a 5 CMC human, but it does a lot of crazy shenanigans that you know you never know if somebody's gonna break it and just do a deck around it. Uh, it's obviously a great card for Commander. So th this is actually going in my fight color commander. So yeah, this is a card that I've been looking into get. We also have Diamond Lion that for two colorless, it's an artifact creature cat that if you tap it, you discard your hand and it creates a three mana of any one color, but you only can play this as an instant, basically meaning that you can discard and you can't activate anything in response to generating the mana because it has to resolve first, has to discard the cards and go, they go to a graveyard and then you generate three mana of any one color. And also Dam that is a two black, is a sorcery destroy target creature. Creature destroy this way cannot be regenerated. Or it has overload for two, two white and two colorless and you overload basically replace a uh, target creature with each creature. These cards are really good for brewers, also they're really good for commander and I think everybody's gonna have a blast with these cards. I think it brings up and opens up a lot of opportunities and a lot of different decks to be brewed and you know, come to come into the modern format. Then we have uh, planeswalkers such as Dakon, Shadow Slayer, Dreya Dawn, Dihada, and Gears the Hunger Tide. And can you say squirrels? I mean, we just got the best squirrel commander in Chatterfang Squirrel General. That for two colors and a green is a squirrel warrior. It's always a gender creature. Has forest walk that reads that if one or more tokens are to be generated under your control, you generate that many plus one 
one one squirrel tokens instead. Then you pay black, and you sacrifice X squirrels, and target creature gets plus X minus X to the end of the turn, and it's a three three. So basically, this is a great commander for squirrels, and I know a lot of people were looking for it. They also have a squirrel lord, kind of gets plus one plus one for to each squirrel, and they're also a so, uh, I think it's a sorcery that creates, and it's a sorcery that makes squirrel tokens, but it also has storm. So basically now you can make those 15 squirrels, and if some way you can give them flying, then you can stop an Emrakul, right? That's the dream. But enough of all the goodies that are coming up on this set. I'm really excited with just the cards that have been spoiled. I'm very, very excited for this set. I'm pretty sure that uh, everybody's excited. I've, I've seen a lot of chatter. I think this is a great set. It has cards that go obviously for like to every format except for standard because of, you know, standard pioneer because they are left out being a modern set. They, they can go into legacy, they can go into, into commander. Obviously there are a lot of commander cards. Some people are calling it uh, commander legends too. But not really because a lot of these cards are going straight into modern decks. I think they help out decks like humans. They help out against, you know, they help out decks against Tron. They help out uh, blue white control. Uh, with a lot of cards uh, and they also help out affinity there's some really good uh, artifact cards in there so all in all we did have in the enemy fetch lands with the planeswalkers that we just saw uh, with the with the squirrels tribal <laughs> you know a lot of people like that so you know maybe you know th this set is really good and maybe uh, you know if you can draft it with your friends if you're able to get your hands on this product I highly recommend you do uh, like I said it just remember that the old border and mortar horizons one reprints I think they are only for the collector boosters so you know if you're gonna spend that money why not spend it on collector boosters I think that the reprints are worth it uh, as you know from more horizons one and if not, if you can still get Modern Horizons 1, go ahead and just get Modern Horizons 1 if you want those cards that were printed in Modern Horizons 1 and do not want to spend for that collector booster's price. With that, with this being said, this is it for this video. I think it was a long video, but you know, it's a great set. I really like it. I'm really excited. I haven't been excited in a long, long time. I think that, you know, when Modern Horizons 1 came out, I was very, very excited because it propped up on some of my decks, but this, all in all, I think is a great, great set. So that's it for this video. If you want to help us to get to other subscribers, if you want to comment, like, and share, subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would be greatly appreciated. Also want to thank our sponsors, Game Inc. and Dex. Both are linked in the description of this video. That's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one.